Good evening. It is 7 p.m. here in the Veterans Room. I call this Joint Education and Human Services Town Council meeting to order. And I'll call the roll. Uh, Council Montigny. Present. Councilor Marchetti. Present. Citizen Member Provost. Present. Citizen Member Ortiz. Present. Five present. We have a quorum. Agenda item number three, update from the school committee. First, um, I just want to say thank you to Ms. Shea for being here. Um, really excited to see EHS and the town council do whatever we can to work with and support our school committee. I think we have a good complement of school committee members, and I'm really thankful that Ms. Shea has taken the time to come and give us an update and also field our questions should we have any, and she can either provide us answers or refer them to the receiver for further review. All right, so Ms. Shea, I hand it off to you. Um, school has opened, which is always a good thing. Um, I, I see the buses coming and going. I, I see on Facebook every once in a while a new update on Wet Street, how you get in and out of the building in the morning and the afternoon <clears throat> because they're anticipating the road being partially closed for construction this winter. So they're right on top of that. Uh, Dr. Villar is coming to our September 20th meeting uh, w when he will give us a report on the uh, wrap up of school for the 21-22 school year and the opening of the 22-23 school year. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, pretty much any questions that uh, you have, all I will be able to do is uh, bring them to him because I mean, school's only been in for well, not quite two weeks yet. So I'm sure that things are settling down, settling in. We all remember the first week of school when we were there. The, finding the bathroom was, and <laughs> getting all your books was about all the, the little guys could handle. But uh, another week and they'll be full on. Thank you, Ms. Shea. Um, I will open it up to members of the committee um, first if they have questions. Um, I do have a couple that came to mind right from the, the start. Um, I was wondering if there was a number um, assigned to how many um, teaching positions were given waivers and how many um, EA2s were hired to fill in for teaching staff. Because I know EA2s can fill in for teaching staff, it's directed by the superintendent. So I was just wondering what the status of those were and wondering too if maybe there was a statewide number to be able to compare ourselves to the state and see if we're doing just on average like every other school district is on um, waivers or are we doing, are we providing more waivers, or are we providing less? Um, that was the question I had that came to mind. And that would be a very interesting question, but again, um, everything has to be forward to mm -hmm. Dr. Villar. Um, I checked the um, list today of openings. We still have quite a few openings listed. Um, I don't know, and I'm looking forward to the, his report on the opening of school. He does always say if you have any questions, you can call him at the town hall. Um, the number at the town hall is well, not at the town hall. That, those, that goes way back. Um, at the old high school at 25 Cole Ave, the number is 508-764-5414. Uh, and he will get back to you. You can email him or call him. And, uh, but I think that perhaps um, I will certainly forward these questions to him so that when he is preparing his report, for the uh, meeting on the 20th that he'll be able to uh, fill in some of the questions. Others will, I, I, I don't know. I, it's just a very difficult, hiring teachers right now is immensely difficult. With COVID, with people retiring, uh, with people um, finding the pay is not what they had hoped and when they get out of college, they're attracted to working in industry, uh, working in the service fields where um, there's better pay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do have one more question I, I did have written down. I wanted to ask for a follow-up because I did ask this at a meeting um, about 
the student representative, um, and there hasn't been a public response yet. So I was wondering if maybe you had had an update as to why the school committee doesn't have a student rep or if uh, they We will did be talk appointed. about that at the last meeting. Uh, Dr. Villar um, sounded much more hopeful that we would uh, have a student rep at this point, um, the clubs, and that would be usually from the um, one of the, the like the student council. Student council, yeah, and they they have to be voted on by their class, and then somebody from that group has to be voted. So usually there is at least a one month lag, mm -hmm. well, unless it's a repeat from last year. But we don't did not have one last year, so. Thank you, Ms. As a former student rep, it's something that's really important to me, and making sure we have student voices on the board. So I'm happy to see that there's progress being made on that. It's really important that we hear directly from the students themselves about the quality of education they're receiving. So thank and you. And they always have such wonderful things to say about what's going on that, mm -hmm. that I, from a totally different perspective. Mm -hmm. I love it when they talk about the sports and the prom. And mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. from a totally different eyes. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, go right ahead, Councilman. Thank you. Yeah, those are two great questions. Uh, the first one was pretty much my main focus um, because I have a lot of experience in Southbridge being an EA too and being asked to teach. And then also, I once received a waiver from Dr. Villar himself. So, it, it not to say that nobody's <coughs> getting waivers in every town because of the troubles that everyone's having to staff, you know, different districts. Uh, it's definitely good to see if we're on par. Do we, if, if the average is five waivers, do we have 15 or do we have three? You know? um, and the student representative, another great question. But uh, definitely if you could forward them along to him, it would be great to see if he can give us some sort of update in his September, what did you say, September 20th? September 20th. That would be great if he uh, can include that. Any other, yeah. Any other members? Council Mark Thank you, Madam Chairman, through you. Um, I had asked... And I know that Councilor Ryan had proposed this idea of having a school committee members come here, and I, and I also thought that that was a great idea. I know that when the state uh, wrote their report on the school district, they said that there was no communication between school committee and town council. So I thought it was a great idea to have you come here. Uh, I was hoping that we could also hear from you what your concerns are about what's going on at the school. My basic concern is that we have had receivership for how many years now, and our MCAS scores aren't showing any improvement. So that's my concern, but I also wanted to hear from you. What are your concerns that we can together present to Valar? Because I know the school committee <coughs> can basically have no power, but the town council certainly has power. Mm -hmm. So working together, if we present these concerns to the Valar, maybe we can get somewhere with it. So that was my main thing. We're not getting anywhere with our MCAS scores, and I also like to hear from you what your concerns are that are going on. Well, in terms of the receivership, um, I am 100% sure that we will continue in receivership for some time. Um, I do know that there will be a new head of the Board of Education uh, because there will be a new governor whether the governor is, go is, is Mr. Deal or Maura Healy, that's still to be determined, but one of them will be. Um, Mr. Deal being a Republican, I don't know if he would make many changes on the board, but I read last night um, that the board members were appointed for five years, but it seems like the um, Secretary of Education, um, who at this point is Mr. I think is Mr. Kaiser, um, that person is appointed with the governor mm -hmm. and would stay with the governor's term. Mm -hmm. So there would be a new person at the head of the board, even though the board, because they have five-year terms, will have, um, will have a flavor of Mr. Baker's um, rules and, and issues and goals. Um, so I don't know. I know that... Um, trying to put Boston under receivership has put a uh, focus on receivership that would never have happened uh, if it was just Holyoke, Lawrence, mm -hmm. and Southbridge. Mm -hmm. People in sure. Boston, um, I mean, the Globe did a whole series of articles on, 
on how receivership is working, where it's working, where it's not working. So the local politicians in Boston who don't know that, that there's anything beyond 495 have, have become aware of receivership and what it means. So I don't know what that's going to mean, but I know it will not be the same oh. with a different governor. Whether, as I said, as I said whether it's Mr. Ne Deal or more Healy, it will, it will be slightly different. So maybe uh, with a new head, we could um, s suggest that um, we at least get some guidelines as to what uh, it is to get us out of receivership. Do we need MCAS scores of this level? Do we need um, uh, so many, you know, solid staff members? There are different guidelines. I know attendance has always been one of them. And um, that, again, <coughs> will not, you know, it will be on this year's number, so we'll be looking uh, soon to have the first numbers appearing and I assume that's going to be probably first of October. We'll start to see hard numbers. Uh, as for my concerns, um, I just want to work with the school committee, with the receiver, and with the town council for the benefit of our kids and our teachers. Um, there's, you know, raising the next generation is still the most important thing that any group of people do because we can do all of this we make a wonderful town for today but if we don't have kids who want to grow up here who want to stay here who want to make this their home and who are the kind of people that our businesses want to hire nothing you know what we do is fruitless and then the other concern I had is that I know that another thing that the state had said when they took over was that there was this revolving door, but yet I see a lot of people coming in and going out. In fact, I think, didn't the high school principal just was escorted, escorted out the door or something? That's what I was hearing. All I know is um, what um, Dr. Villar has said, that there is a new principal, a, a new acting principal at the high school. Uh, it is on the official website. If you look under um, administration, um, the name of the, the uh, person who is acting principal is there. So it, that is official. <coughs> Once it's on the official website, that is official. Um, I'm sorry, the other part of your question? But we have a revolving door. Oh, yeah, revolving door. That is going. one thing that Dr. Villar has, uh, has settled down in the administrative level. Our administrators are much more in place than they were. We were having a real turnover. We were having a real turnover in superintendents and acting superintendents and assistant superintendents. Uh, it was, I used to say that what we needed was like the grocery stores when they have the pictures of the managers of the different departments and they slide the picture in and they slide the other one the new one in, yeah, uh, that is, that at least has, now it's gone down to the teachers, and part of it is the whole teacher shortage across the country, and um, we're do, we've um, offered $10,000 signing bonuses in a lot of the positions, uh, several of the positions are $3,000 signing bonuses, so we are making an effort to get qualified people. Uh, the problem is, um, part of it's our location. Um, it's not an easy place to get to with public transportation. Uh, it's not close to um, a university. Uh, university of Worcester is, is still a hall going back and forth if you're working on your masters. They are offering a couple of masters <coughs> programs in Southbridge through the school system now, which is a big help to young teachers. Because I made that trip back and forth to Worcester State and uh, it got long. Okay, well, 
I actually have a follow-up, if you don't mind, to that. Um, can we get um, a report, um, a comparative report of what the turnover numbers are this year compared to years previous? And can we also get a report of our turnover numbers compared to the districts around us for this year? I want to see how we're doing in comparison to other. And if it can be delineated further to show the difference between administrative um, and um, teaching level positions, I, I think that would be really important information for the town to know. I'm almost wondering if the state is going to come up with some numbers for that because this year has been such a crisis across, across mm -hmm. Massachusetts mm -hmm. and across the country. I think that uh, politicians uh, and um, universities are looking all of a sudden at um, we, have, we have to as a country do something about education, do something about not just retaining teachers but actually getting them. Mm -hmm. But I will, um, as I said, I will forward these questions, your concerns to Dr. Villar. Um, if um, if he doesn't, um, if he isn't able to provide the information by the uh, meeting on the 20th, um, I guess we'll keep at it. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. well, That's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. If I can. Council Madam Chair. Um, well, I just have to say, this has been great that you're coming. I hope that you come back again because. I hope more yeah, absolutely, because all these questions are great questions, and the school system is near and dear to my heart, and to what you're all saying here about the youth and, and the future generations is really all we do this for. And if we can be using the great function of subcommittees to give power back to the school committee in some way, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm happy to be a part of it to show that EHS is important. Um, so thank you for coming, and we're here for you always. Any other members of the board have questions? I do not. No. All right. Um, uh, do I have questions out here from the public? Uh, Councillor Steeves and Councillor Laza. Yeah. Um, a couple of things. One, one is a follow-up on uh, what you were saying a few minutes ago about the signing bonus. I'm just curious. When do they get it? And I do it? not do know. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. Honest. Because that might be an issue as far as retention goes. Mm -hmm. If they're getting immediately then leaving. Maybe you just need to rearrange it so that they get it after sitting for two years or something like that. Yeah, is it staggered? That's a, yeah, that's that would be good enough. Yeah. Um, also, um, where do things stand as far as the uh, the master plan project that we approved for, for this year's budget? Has that, how's that gone out to bid? Is there any, any, any effort to start it? Because that's obviously going to be a big issue that we'll have to deal with financially over the not too distant future. On top of all of the other ones we have to do. And the last question I had is, um, ha, do you know of any any changes in school choice from last year or recent years, and and, and charter in, in with between both between start the charter district, the charter school, and the other districts that we send kids to? Well, the charter and uh, other schools is definitely not my bailiwick, nor is it my interest. I think they should all go to Southbridge Public Schools. Well, I think they so, should too, but I'm saying, what, 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 are, where are we sending them? Are they? Uh, I, is that, I, is that number? Two? Are we getting more kids back? I think that's another one of the numbers that the state provides. And I remember when I was teaching, there was a date, and I think it was somewhere in the middle of October, that you had to be where you were going to be. Um, we used to get a lot of uh, kids going to Bay Path and um, some of them didn't stay. Yeah. And at a certain point in the year, if you've been in a school for a certain amount of time, there that school is the one that gets the state money. Right. So if you start it, you know, in the, your sophomore year at Southbridge High School and you go a certain amount of time and then you transfer to Bay Path, we keep the money. Right. Um, yeah. If you go to Bay Path and then come back to Southbridge High School, Bay Path gets mm -hmm. the money. So I know that there's a date certain, right. and I know that um, the state keeps very close records on that, but it's it's a little bit later down in the year. I'm pretty sure it's like October 1st, if I remember correctly, or something like that. It's yes. like a two a one month, two month period. Uh, I think it's a little bit Is later in October, but... It might be November. Oh no, it's definitely not in November. It's definitely October. And it's someplace, but I'm not sure. 
Lost that, Councilor Steves? <coughs> Councilor Lawson. I'd just like to uh, commend uh, Jackie on creating this uh, joint atmosphere with the mm -hmm. school committee. I, I thank Martina Shea for being here. But most of all, I'm really impressed that we have a full complement on our school committee. Uh, as we all know, the town council has the, the budgetary powers, and we have to show a unified front mm -hmm. with our school committee um, and working together as far as the information. A lot of information and questions that are being asked is the usual data that comes out of the district um, as far as school choice and, 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 and uh, how many teachers do we lose at this building, how many teachers do we lose that building. On a bright note, I'd like to say, I know everybody, I've, I've been talking to teachers that have exited, why they exited and all that, exit interviews. So for myself, I just want to put a plug in there for, for Jeff House. The guy is a shining star right now. The most difficult school to teach in or to manage is always the middle school. And it's a known fact that this guy has implemented a standard, a high standard. He's implemented discipline. You walk through the hallways, it's very orderly. Um, I've heard from parents and teachers that this guy is the real deal. That's their quote, not my quote. And I look at it right now and I think that he is probably the role model that you want to use as, as an administrator. On the opposite side, there was a, an appointment that didn't work out too well. I was shocked that she was escorted out the day before school. That's always been a no-no by past practice of any district. Usually if somebody is not doing their job or whatever, they usually are escorted out at the end of the year so they can have a search during the summer to get a new administrator. But we lost a lot of teachers at the high school level because of that administrator. So moving forward, and I'm sure that uh, we can work hand in hand. I'm, I'm not, you know, starting a civil war here, but we've been drinking the Kool-Aid for a long time from the state. And I think that we need to uh, stand up. I mean, like Martina said, all of a sudden Boston's in the play. Mm -hmm. Now's the time to, to get the wagon rolling on, on receiverships to create a dismount. And, you know, there's nothing, I'm not, we're in receivership with no direction on how to get out. Mm -hmm. And the state, and I put that on the state, not on Mr. Villar, not on our school committee, not on the council. Looking forward, if it was a competitive design to get out, we would work very diligently, we'd know how to get out. But there is no directions on how to get out. So, as Martina Shea has said, I think we're going to be in it. For, for a while until these communities all gather together and then politicals in Boston have to listen. And I think uh, my political savvy tells me, depending on who the governor is, the destiny um, of receiverships is on the line with this next election. Thank you. I, if I, I'm just gonna extend on that. I know for a fact that candidate Healy has said numerous times in public events that she is going to look at reviewing in um, uh, reviewing the receivership law to fix some of the things with it. I, she's heard from all these communities. She understands this, a lot of the concerns that are coming out of the communities. And as Ms. Uh, as School Committee Chair Shea pointed out, Boston being considered changed everything. And it's mm -hmm. finally getting taken seriously. Mm -hmm. And I'm, it's sad that it took this long because unfortunately our kids have had to deal with some of the consequences of this. However, I'm happy that we're moving forward <clears throat> and that there's an, there may be an opportunity to do an, update the law to make it more palatable and more accommodating of the communities instead of this one-size-fits-all approach that the state has seemed to take. So. In terms of the um, letting people go uh, late in the summer, uh, as all of you as town councilors know, um, personnel matters are done mm -hmm. behind closed doors mm -hmm. and are no one ever hears. Mm -hmm. Uh, until the whole thing is finally resolved. Um, so I have no more idea than anybody else, but um, it will, I am sure, be handled in the proper and complete way. Thank you, Ms. Shane. Oh, sorry, can you please, oh, Miss Councilor Riva, sorry, my glasses broke for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> any excuse, any excuse. I, I, I can't see without my glasses. Councilor Rivas. It's okay. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, so I'm not as concerned about the waivers. There's so many districts 
with a teacher shortage, um, that's expected. Um, and that also opens up the door for people who might be passionate and want to mm -hmm. teach students. Mm -hmm. um, because you can always help someone pass a test, but you can't really teach passion. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we need in our community is sure. teachers that you know have that passion and mm -hmm. you know adults that want to um, help our students succeed. Um, but I'm more interested in the retention rates. So like, what what are the numbers of teachers that have been retained, and sort of what is the retention plan? Um, that the receiver has in regards to keeping the teachers that we do have. There, we do have some teachers that have been here um, quite a while, and some of them have have advanced. There's been some success, especially in the in the middle school. I've heard about reading levels, and I know that we um, not too long ago had some data as far as like. Um, some of the reading levels or the MCAS scores around reading in the middle school and I think that um, knowing a little bit more and digging into some of that success and hearing, I'd love to hear from some of the teachers that have had success. Um, that would be great if the school committee could have a presentation, you know, Dr. Villar could have some of the teachers coming in and doing a presentation around their successes um, and talking about specific, um, you know, specific strategies that some of the teachers um, have implemented to get success with students that have had difficulty before. I think that is a way to attract other teachers. Success attracts success, um, and talking about the 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 things that we've done well and the teachers that have done the things well in our system, I think is an important thing to, for our community to hear and for our students to hear. We're always hearing about all of the negative things that are happening. Our students mm -hmm. need inspiration and they need to know that their hard work is paying off, that people mm -hmm. are recognizing right. their hard work. So that's my first question. And then um, my second question is around um, I saw a post around leadership and some of the um, training that Dr. Villar had implemented this year um, for the leadership and the principals, and there is you know, definitely more stability. Um, I'd like to know what that training entailed, um, whether cultural competency was part of that training. Um, you know, our students are very diverse, and our teaching staff isn't as diverse as our student mm -hmm. population. And so um, having that type of training is very important in our community. So I'd like to know what that leadership training, um, you know, what was part of that training. And then lastly, my last question is around MCAS and the, and the recent um, vote from the board to increase mm -hmm. the test scores around MCAS and I'd like to hear from Dr. Villar like, what his plan is to help our students who are already struggling to pass MCAS. Um, now with this new vote um, and increasing the scores, what, what does that mean to a community, community like ours? And um, you know, how is Dr. Villar going to, or the school system going to help our students um, try to meet this Any other questions from Mr. Shenia? Not so much a question, but <clears throat> usually talk on the streets pretty accurate when it comes to uh, issues involving some of the school teachers, the retentions, and those kind of things. Dr. Villar has been asked before about uh, the retention rate versus what we lose, what's been terminated, changes. We never get an accurate number from him. Uh, the problem that I see is that, you know, back when we were in school, even up to a few years ago, teachers had the passion to teach. And by having that passion to teach, they stuck around. But today's teachers in our system mm -hmm. teach in fear of their jobs. Mm -hmm. and, and 
that's not a good thing because the kids don't get educated. If you look at the high school graduation rate, I think less than 60 kids graduated this year. Something like that. I'm not sure of the numbers. But uh, so, you know, when teachers have to do that, it, it's difficult. And then the turnover rate is so high. Uh, the turnover rate just doesn't affect the school, it affects the town end because it's an uh, HR does stuff here in the town end. Uh, for the school department, and, and they have their HR department too, I'm sure, working on things. As far as charter schools and school choice, the reason people are going because they are not happy with the system in school uh, in Southbridge. They're not happy with the education that, that kids get. And, and that's why the charter schools and the school choices are flourishing in our area. People are leaving. Uh, Dr. Bala was so happy at the budget, he talked about 15 kids came to Southbridge. I don't think that is a uh, something to jump for joy with the show. We've got 15 kids that came to Southbridge that want to be educated here. If you look at the 15 kids, there's a reason why they came here. Family members moved closer to town and those kind of things. So I, I, I believe the school committee, I can't wait for the school committee to take over control of this school. I think they'll do a better job than what is being done. You'll see retention uh, be better for the community, and you'll see a uh, teacher sticking around a lot longer, and the you'll see the passion to come back into teaching in Southbridge. It's going to take some time to get there, and if we can keep the school committee and council together, I, I think it'll work. Madam Chair? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, you can give me a chance to answer, um, Councilor. Oh, there it is. Read this is Go right ahead. Apologies. Um, no problem. Um, the MCAS scores, that is going to be a problem. Um, the MCAS test, if any of you have ever seen one or administered one or even read some of the questions, um, is a poorly designed test for um, the subject and the, um, the abilities of the students to answer. Um, I proctored a child uh, who had, in, I, with his math section, uh, who was, um, had visual problems. So I helped him with the reading portion of it, and several of the math questions were so convoluted, I couldn't figure them out. Um, it is not a good test, and as long as we're hiring a company to do a test that's written mostly by uh, college professors uh, who have not been in fourth grade for a long time. Um, we want to, that is a major issue. Upping the scores, I think, just makes certain people feel that they're making our education more rigorous, but I won't get into that. Um, as for um, MCAS scores, they will be out usually uh, middle to end of October. Um, and they're posted on the state website, so we'll all, um, and you'll, you'll see on television, they'll be talking about the scores in Boston or Springfield or wherever. Uh, you can go right on the, uh, the DC website and our scores will be there uh, in comparison. All the towns are there. Uh, there's one line that's the state average, and of course that's what we're aiming for, to be um, at the passing level, the state average level. Um, uh, as for the reading scores, um, that's, uh, that's a difficult thing. Uh, you did say that uh, you were interested in knowing what the, um, the schools were like, what was going on in the schools. Uh, Dr. Villar has suggested that our October or November meeting be in one of the elementary schools so we can see what the kids are doing, meet some of the teachers, meet some of the kids, and I'm really looking forward to that because I think that will, um, and it will be, it probably will be videotaped and then run on television. There ha There's some questions as to how they can um, make sure that they can take images of, of the kids doing things with the lighting, with the sound, that it would probably be better to videotape it, but it will be on cable, and I do suggest that you all watch that, because it's, it's going to be cool. Okay. 
it's gonna be cool. Um, talk on the street. I don't know the exact number of kids who graduated, but I went to graduation and there were 99 kids who mm. walked. So I know that there were at least a small fistful of kids who walked, who had a couple of credits that they needed. Very often, even back when I was a child, before the crust of the earth cooled, <laughs> a, um, some of the kids, um, we have one kid who, I, I, I think he took Jim every single free period he had all year long because he hadn't met his gym qualifications for graduation. So sometimes you get a kid who just missed a credit or two and they know perfectly well if he goes to summer school, all is going to be fine. And they usually let them walk. And I think they should. Yeah, right. I just wanted to uh, thank you. Uh, follow up on the previous counselor's um, concerns that, that I think there should be a, uh, a student presentation of some kind showing positive stuff because I, I think that's a great idea. After teaching high school for so many years, the kids really do get to, uh, very enthusiastic yeah. about that and it'll make them do better um, and as far as the waivers go I think it really is important I mean uh, that we, we know where we are comparative to other districts with waivers I mean it, it is nice I, I benefited from one once but I mean certainly if you have 40 people in the district on waivers I'm just throwing a number out there like that I mean you start to talk about losing accreditation in the district so waiver mm -hmm. numbers are definitely important we don't want to turn into just a farm for teachers to come here learn and leave uh, but what we need to do is make sure that we have people in place that can educate our students so uh, it'd just be cool to see where we line up against all the other districts around and maybe even uh, Springfield and, and Holyoke larger school systems but if we can take that percentage and compare if they have five percent waivers do they have ten in the receivership compared to normal districts not in receivership maybe they have half as much so uh, that's still, after all these questions, that's pretty paramount. I hope that the receiver can put that in his, in his September 20th uh, um, That's a very delicate question when you're speaking to me because I taught twice two different waivers mm -hmm. because I chose to move up to different jobs. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, uh, the state makes you... Uh, this is this it, it just it boggles my mind it used to be if you started teaching and you had a teaching certificate from your college you pretty much could teach almost anything in a certain grade range it started off if you had a teaching certificate you could teach anything in any grade then they realized that was a little too broad so the high school uh, broke down into subject areas but the elementary school K to 8 I was a proud owner of a K-8 to certification. Uh, if you had asked me to teach kindergarten, uh, things would not have gone well for either myself or the kindergartners. Then I decided to specialize in teaching reading. Uh, in order to teach reading, you literally have to get an additional master's degree and do a practice teaching and take the um, the Massachusetts uh, teacher certification exam, the MTELs. Then I decided that I wanted to t do the library, which by the way was the best job of my life. Um, I had to get another master's degree, do another practicum and take the MTELs. It's gargantuan. Yeah, and, and just to follow up from my First thought there, yeah, I, I totally remember the library with you. That was a great way to end my high school career with you in the library. But um, I will say that in 2019, uh, in 2018, in that December, uh, Dr. Villar gave me a waiver to teach sixth grade science. And then by March, I had passed my MTELs, and, and I'm still certified to teach grades five through eight. So it is a great system, and, and you know, Dr. Villar, you got to give him kudos to, to believing in me, and I delivered for him, and, uh, and I'm sure that's what, uh, you know, certain people are, are hoping can happen with waivers in the district nowadays, is that we can see people through and keep them there after they get their certification from that waiver. So. I'm just stating that it, 
is not as easy as it looks from the outside, the hoops you have to jump through. So when you say someone has a waiver, do they have a waiver because uh, they barely made it through college? Or do they have a waiver because they already have two master's degrees but need another one to teach the subject they're teaching? Mm -hmm. It's, you have to look at each individual person. It's like the MCAS scores. What some kid can do so easily and what some other kid has to struggle to do, it's, education isn't as easy as we would like it to be. Well, I was told in 2019 that, but by the office that year that Stockbridge District only had five or six waivers to give before they were going to get flagged by the state. So, I mean, whether they're for well, I'm masters... I'm sure that this year that... Well, that's the number yeah. I think we're all looking for. Yeah, yeah I, I'm sure that this year, um, if you can make a case for a person, I'm sure you'll be fine. Yeah, absolutely. All right, um, I do... I. I just because you were having a really good thought, I get where you're going with this because that's why I asked about the turnover and retention rates. You can have really good waiver programs, but if you don't have the veteran staff staying there to show these waiver teachers how to do it, yep. you can have all the waiver staff in the world with all the passion in the world, but you need the people who have been there who understand the system. And if we're not retaining teachers, which I'm glad Ms. Um, Council Rivas asked about the retention, but you also have to look at the turnover. How many teachers are we losing consistently? So that's why I asked all those questions in kind of a roundabout because I, I want to make sure that we have a properly um, educated force to actually teach our kids in a district that has a lot of heavy needs and needs a lot of heavy supports. We need the expertise. So that's why I'm wondering what those numbers are in comparison to turn <coughs> attention rates. Yeah. So I get where you're going. Yeah. And, and I'm all set too, but thank you, Mary Jay. Councilor, yes. Um, just going back to the the waiver thing, um, you know, we also have people that are, um, have a lot of experience as mm -hmm. teachers that have come from Puerto Rico and they're on mm -hmm. waivers. And so, That's great. It, so there are multiple mm -hmm. different reasons why someone would be on a waiver. Mm -hmm. um, and I think having a full picture between the retention rate, mm -hmm. I mean, just having numbers of waivers, that's not telling you the story. So you need a little more information mm -hmm. to get a full picture of what is happening in our district. Because if you have 10 teachers, people that were teachers in Puerto Rico and are on waivers, that's very different than having people that are new to education and are on a waiver and are switching careers. That's very different um, because you do have the experience from someone who was teaching for 20 years um, somewhere else and just needs a, a little more time to pass the intel because of the language barrier. So That's um, great. I think we, we need a full picture yeah. before we make mm -hmm. a, um, you know, kind of a, an assessment. All right, any more questions? Uh, one more question as a follow-up to the waiver program. Do the waivers stay with the teacher if the teacher chooses to move? No, mm -hmm. they're granted by the district. Yeah. I was just wondering if it had any relation to the term. Mm -hmm. There are more questions, but I think that this is enough for one night. I, I think, think so. We should keep piling it on. I mean, I didn't want her to come here to have her answer everything. No. I, wanted this I would love to be able to answer everything, <laughs> but um, I, I will take these me. to Dr. Villar. All right, thank you. Um, I, I am sure that some of these will definitely be um, as a normal part of his end of the year and beginning of the year. Um, reports um, usually those and those will be up on the uh, up online the um, school committee meeting will be posted um, will be um, broadcast live and uh, he usually does a, a, a presentation um, so a lot of these numbers you'll be seeing um, up on the screen so a good Tuesday night for all of us to enjoy. I'll be there. All right. Remember, only, only not a quorum of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Um, seeing no further discussion on the updates on the school committee, thank you, Ms. Shea. And we will move on to agenda item number four. <clears throat> Discuss the town manager's appointment of Daniel Waziuk. Waziuk? Waziuk. 
uh, as director of health for a three-year term, effective immediately through June 30th, 2025, pending successful completion of state ethics, and entertain a motion to town council for confirmation. So moved. Second. Mr. Manager. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, just because I did have a question earlier, uh, people had asked why it was on the revised agenda. And we had had several meetings with Mr. Wazir. We actually had him in to meet some of our staff during the interviews, and we invited a member of the Board of Health because this is a big position and we wanted to make sure we were a good fit. Uh, but in the process of negotiating uh, an offer, it wound up going into the weekend and we didn't get his acceptance till over the weekend. We would have liked to have had it last week for the posting. And given that we want to make sure there's adequate time for him to get appointed, give his notice, that is why we had asked to be placed on tonight's EHS so that we could go to Monday. But I didn't want um, to prolong this to our meeting on the 26th because there's still a lot of health director positions open. Um, as you can see, I believe you all have his resume. He has a, a strong background in public comments. health and is yeah, a public yeah. auditor and inspector. He has many of the certifications that we currently lack with our existing staff, so he complements that. And as I said, after meeting with him on more than one occasion and bringing some of the staff, he, he, by all accounts, is a good fit for the existing staff that we have. And he's demonstrated through his question and answers with all of us that he would be uh, an asset to the community and a good leader in that position. So that's why we're bringing him. Thank you, and I, I also just want to say I did post it on the agenda considering all the factors as a more emergent need. We don't have a health director, we need one, and I'd rather go through subcommittee and get reviewed before going up to council, and as the manager stated, I didn't want to have to make the community wait another couple of weeks to get this person in if it meant we can get a health director in and on the ground as soon as possible, so uh, I felt it was appropriate to have it be put on here. So, Mr. Manager, could you continue about, or did you already or did all finish? That's pretty time? much an overview. I'm happy to, and uh, Ms. Rabina is here as well for any questions. Um, given the short notice, because he did accept over the weekend, I couldn't get him here this evening, but he has agreed to be here on Monday night for any council questions. Okay. Council Marchetti, then Council Montegui. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Through you, could you tell me the salary? Um, I don't know if I've ever been asked that question before, but um, we are bringing him in the middle of the um, schedule given his experience. We're bringing him in at step three, which is $90,000. dollars 90, 90355 to be exact. What, wasn't that Andy's salary range? No? no, he was significantly more because he was also wearing uh, multiple hats mm -hmm. as well. Right. Um, so looking over his resume, it looks pretty good. Looks like a pretty, pretty good fit, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering what, what took you so long. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to answer. You know, I think it's important. <laughs> I think it's a rhetorical question. <laughs> no, it looks it looks like a good one. Thank well, you. Well, all comment on that was you know we we had a lot of these positions respect. posted, and you know we've had people come in, and there was some input from the board of health as well as the staff. You know, we had some people in, and we wanted to make sure we had a good fit. Um, and I think we were very fortunate in getting this particular candidate. Um, he was in, very much interested in the position and there was a slight delay because he had to be out of the area. Um, and so we arranged to have the second interview when he came back, um, again, attended by staff. Um, not only the, like the finance director and the HR director, but also get staff from inspections to, to attend those as well. So we wanted to make sure that we were getting the right person for South and the right person for the people that are going to be working in there. So, yeah. but again, there are so many of those positions right now posted. Um, it's very competitive. Uh, and so, 
I, again, I think we're very fortunate to get a very qualified candidate with a strong background as we did. So. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, just two things. Everybody should know by now I'm a process and procedure guy, but that's that's what the open meeting law is there for. So the 48-hour window of posting a meeting says if it's not reasonably expected to be on there and it's more of an emergency situation, which it, it truly is, it, uh, then it can be it can be put on. And I think it was a great move by the manager and, and uh, Chairwoman uh, Ryan. Um, because I, I hear a lot from the school side, as we all do, um, the, the kids are still in another year of COVID protocol over there, whether there's masks or not. And like to do that without, to start a school year without a health director, um, everything the manager said about this, uh, bringing it forward is, is the right move, in my opinion. Uh, I looked at his resume. It looks nice. I'll be supporting him tonight and on Monday. Um, and that's basically at the process and procedure and the schools need to be able to continue to work uh, with the COVID protocol. Uh, so, thank you. Right. Anyone else? Councilor Steves. Um, yeah, I just, uh, well, I had a couple of quick questions for him, but you can't ask, answer them here. Um, but um, I was also speaking, speaking with the manager. Um, I was wondering if you could kind of summarize a bit what you thought was the most critical qualities that he discussed him have, himself having his experience and for, for the talent for our current situation. Well, it was a bunch of things. I mean, he brings the, the breadth and depth of knowledge at his resume affords him. He's been in a variety of different communities, uh, some that resemble Southbridge in terms of the makeup. So he's been in city forms of government, uh, town forms of government. Um, you know, it's also his presence. He, he indicated he, he enjoys field work, so He's not going to be someone who's always behind the desk, that he would be out uh, in the field doing work and mentoring staff. So those, I thought, were important qualities. He also talked about tackling blight mm -hmm. in one of the communities he had been in. So um, he was answering a lot of the things the way we really wanted our candidate to answer. Um, and the other question I had is, did he indicate any interest in getting a building commission qualification? He may have early on, but Still, I've shared this with some. Um, our local inspector is still working. Uh, if he completes his next exam, he can be an interim building commissioner. Um, I think one of the issues that I've heard from council was that our previous director of inspections was wearing both of those hats, right. and it may have been uh, you know, a bit daunting. So I figured we get the health director in now see how that goes, mm -hmm. um, if our, we can utilize our existing staff and move them up, that might be you know, a viable option. I'm hoping that will work out, but time mm -hmm. will tell. And we can evaluate, and, and as one of the council would say, adjust fire as we go. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's, I don't have a problem, I just want to see if you had to express any interest in that area. But I know previously, um, for your time, we did originally have the department. <coughs> mm -hmm. And maybe that, maybe that works better. We'll find out. I would tend to agree with you, Councillor. I think yeah. I do. Councillor Lasso. I just want to say his, his resume was outstanding. Yeah. Uh, I commend HR and the town manager for moving quickly as they could. Um, moving it forward as far as the process, push comes to shove. If you wanted to push it straight up to the council, it would be your call as chairman of the subcommittee. Um, I look at the town manager splitting his uh, position as the right decision. Health inspector and building inspector are two different worlds. Mm -hmm. I think we need the health inspector as a solo position with the Board of Health. Mm -hmm. And it's not just for schools, it's for everything in this town. Mm -hmm. From blight to, to the septic system inspections. Mm -hmm. I looked at his track record on the communities he served in. Mm -hmm. This is not, he's not a job jumper. Yeah. He's, he's very stable in the job place. Uh, I think this is a great steal. Um, I, they have no problem, I'll be supporting this, but most of all, splitting the position is as big as appointing this person uh, as far as operations. The Board of Health, and if we go through another pandemic or something of its kind, I think having the health inspector with the Board of Health separately is much better design than coupling it together with, with a, uh, a commissioner of, um, of buildings, which is another ball, old number ball, ball. And again, I'd just like to say, 
I know the TM, I get frustrated with waiting. And this one here, don't wait. This is the best thing we could do. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm, Mr. Boston. Uh, our landfill issue is, is post closure now and is not. But does the uh, applicant have experience in towns where we have rely on uh, curbside pickup and what we're going forward with with that? I don't have my notes in front of me, but I did mention during the process that I would be looking for assistance during. Our transition out of the contract with developing the RFP. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did bring it up, but I can't remember what. what oh, he, he did mention having yeah. some experience, oh. and he actually um, mentioned um, different um, challenges that he's seen and worked with different communities. So he, he does have some experience with, with curbside. All right. It's, mm -hmm. it's a good reason I asked. There's a lot of community out there that don't have the curbside. Service like the city of Southbridge does, and I just want to see if they had some experience. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Please. Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. <coughs> All those in favor? All those opposed? Unanimous of all present. All right. <coughs> Agenda item number five, discuss the Department of Veterans Services fiscal year 23 grant package for the earmark denoted in the fiscal year 2023 General Appropriation Act, effective July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023, in the amount of $50,000, and entertain a motion to recommend the town council accept this grant and allow the town manager to sign all related documents. So moved. So moved. Uh, second. 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 Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. We have a first and we have a second. Councilor Adams. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just I'm acting tonight as the president of the Veterans Council of Southbridge. Um, I will not be voting on this on Monday night. I'll be recusing myself completely hmm. because I am the one who advocated for this fifty thousand dollars from the the Senate and it did pass through the budget and everything is good to go with that. I know some of you haven't been here when I uh, gave the presentation back in May, November. We'll be doing another presentation in November from the Veterans Council. But this is $50,000 puts us way over um, the amount, uh, thanks to a lot of donations, to do the first park, which is over on Elm Street. We'll, have to, we'll be required by this uh, to spend it by 2023. I'm sorry, June of 2023. So this will be the first funds that we'll have to go. So from Engineering studies to to whatever it may be construction itself. Absolutely. This will be the first thing now when it comes to Spending this money. This is not in the hands of the Veterans Council. This is in the hands of the town So the town uh, going through Karen Hanoi will will be the one who will be billing out the money as we go through it Obviously, we have to meet state regulations and stuff like that when it comes to procurement and uh, Quotes and all that kind of stuff. So we'll follow suit and she's gonna be our guiding light on that issue itself because I, you don't want me dealing with that because I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> but we do know, I do know that this will be the first money that is spent. So we have to spend it by June 30th of 2023. We are pretty much um, shovel ready, but I, I just want to make sure that we go through the town process correctly. Uh, um, obviously, obligate the funds to the proper contractor or contractors as we go along. So um, I, uh, I should have probably brought what the design looks like. But that Elm Street uh, project is eight uh, World War One um, neighborhood plaques that are around town. Uh, those eight individuals died in Argonne Forest in 1917 and 1918 um, during World War One. Uh, we're bringing those over. We also acquired a Franco-American uh, about five seven hundred pound plaque. Uh, we're going to be mounting that as well. We're doing QR readers, lights, the flagpole. The pavers and all that kind of stuff, benches, ADA compliance, all that kind of stuff. The only thing that we have, we'll do a dig safe over there because there is a line that goes from the fire station over to the monument. Nobody knows that there's a actual wire that goes straight to the monument, but it's dead. Thanks to Mr. Roberts over there, who is the treasurer of the Veterans Council. And, and I have Tracy Price, who is the vice president of the uh, Veterans Council as well. But uh, he tested it out and made sure it was not live. Um, <laughs> so that being said, um, okay. Uh, any questions you guys may have, um, I definitely will answer as best I can. Um, I don't have any questions. Just want to thank you for your continued work on this. Thank yeah. you for getting it in.
the state senate's budget package that's really important and it's it's really good work that's going to go to something meaningful in town and bring mm -hmm. more light to those who have served in our community so thank you for all the good work thank you done. Sure. I was just pretty much going to say the same thing. Thank you so much. I mean, it's great that you took the lead on it. I appreciate you recusing yourself, and I'm supporting it. Anything you ever bring like this, I'll always support for the veterans. I appreciate the council. Thank you. And I, I, go ahead. Councilman, um, are you all set? Councilman Marchetti. Oh, yeah, too many M's. Marchetti <laughs> <laughs> and Marchetti can't be next to each other. <laughs> Councilman Marchetti. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, through you. Are the state rep, is the state rep going to be here Monday night when you present this? Uh, I mean, I can ask him. I'm going to text him um, based on your recommendation this evening. Um, the Veterans Council has a meeting on Thursday night where he said he's going to try to make it to provide the uh, photo op and uh, the big oversized check. I will ask mm -hmm. him if he'd like to come to the town council meeting. And shouldn't the Veterans Council be the ones making the presentation? rather than you if you're going to recuse yourself? Mm -hmm. Well, because I have no vote in this whatsoever mm -hmm. at this point in time. And so I did, I talked to the chair, I talked to the town manager just to show, uh, make sure I'm in all good faith. All right. um, and then uh, Tracy and uh, Keith will be there Monday night to speak all if right. there's any questions that may arise. Very good, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Unanimous of all the president, thank you. Agenda item number six, discuss service contract between the Town of Southbridge and Power Product System, LLC, for the annual service of generator of the generator at the community center in the amount of $430. Entertain a motion to recommend the town council, uh, the town council ratify the agreement and allow the town manager to sign all related documents. So moved. Second. All right. Hi, everybody. Go right ahead. Um, so this is an annual, well, they haven't had a contract annually. It's just been going up. Mm -hmm. um, through what, um, through what, uh, anyway, this has been since 2017, they haven't had a new contract, but they have been servicing our generator since 2017, maybe even be before that. Um, and it's $430 from 375, which was the last amount. So it hasn't gone up very much. Um, we do need to have our generator serviced. <laughs> Uh, other than that, I don't really have much to say. If you have any questions, how old is the generator that's in there? It's very old, like most of the other things in our building. Um, the fire department has just put in a grant to try to get us a new, bigger generator. Um, we don't know if that's going to go through or not, but <laughs> it's in the works. I'd be happy to see that personally because it'd be. I would like to see more done in our community center, and that means we need to have a better generator. So. Mm -hmm. All I was going to say, thank you, Madam Chair, is that it seems like there's 20 things listed on here and it, it, that he does provide, so that's pretty good. I mean, but it does build the question, you know, 400 adds up after a while, we can get a new one, and grant money would be even better, mm -hmm. so, I mean, I, I'll support this for sure, yeah. All right. Any other further comments, Thank you, Madam Chair, through you. My only question is... That generator, that's that portable one in the back of the mm -hmm. building? Yes. I thought that was brand new. I thought we just bought that. No. That's and they were doing COVID. No, huh? that's been it. No, we rented one oh, to see. run the air conditioner. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It was a bigger one, actually much bigger than that one. So this one in the back of the building. Correct. It's been there for a long time. It's, I was just there the other night, for, or last night, for voting, and it wasn't on, so it's not being used. No, it's only used when we have heat running or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. Definitely need something yeah. permanent. All right, thank you. Thank you. Councilor Steve. This isn't the same generator as the, the one that the um, um, the Tri Epic picked up for the for the emergency use. No, the that was rented. Okay. Um, for the air conditioning unit. No, that no, we I don't. Had. I don't mean. I don't mean that one. I mean one that they have there permanently. For no, that's the one sizes. in the back. Okay. Yeah, but it's it's the community center's generator. Oh, but that is one we're renting. Yes. Okay. It's the only one we have. Okay. Yes. Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> Seeing no further discussion, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Unanimous of all present. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Number agenda item number seven, adjournment. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So, 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 all right. All those in favor? <laughs> Unanimous of all present. Thank you, everybody.